before I got into ministry, I was a probation officer. Before I was a probation officer, I was a mall cop. Like Paul Blart, exactly what you picture. And it was glorious. <laughs> like I had everything short of a Segway. I wished for a Segway. I hoped for one. We never had the budget. <laughs> But what me and my mall cop buddies did was we were connected to a YMCA, this mall that we worked at. And this YMCA, they, we just got like real close with the staff there. And we're like, hey, after hours, can we borrow some of the gym mats that you guys have? Like if you're not using them, they're like, yeah, absolutely. Come on over, take a cart and take them. And so our idea was that we would take these mats and we had these big sprawling like ventilation rooms in the mall. And we started laying down mats and we used it as like a training space for like cool like underground mixed martial arts stuff. And what turned out at first of a few guys just sparring with each other, then turned into like set up fights. Like this guy's gonna fight this guy. And what turned into set up fights amongst friends then turned into like small staff coming and watching those fights. And then what turned into small staff coming and watching those fights turned into like entrance music where you're coming into Rocky. You know, it's the eye of the tigers. Yeah, it's just as bad as you think it was. And so I was, you know, in a few of these, these little underground fights. And I remember one time, like, I went to McDonald's after, and the girl's like, are you okay? And I'm like, yeah, why? And she's like, well, you're bleeding from your nose and your mouth. I just want to make sure, like, everything's all right. You know, around that time, I went into my, uh, my, my whole, like, certification to become a probation officer. And part of what they do is they do a background check on you, a criminal record check, and then an interview. And in that interview, they asked me, are you involved with any criminal activity? tell me. And I let them know about this. He's like, yeah, you should stop doing that. I said, okay. So, so, so I changed something in myself because something outside myself is what I wanted more than what was inside myself. That's one way we change. Where we want to be seen a certain way, we want to have a certain thing, we want to do something, so we change outside ourselves. Fast forward a few years later and my dad passes away. When my dad dies, he had this family ring that he had on his hand that he by, that after we passed, my mom gave to my younger brother, but then took a whole bunch of family gold and printed a few more of these rings, had them made. They were exactly the same, so that each one of us sons could have a ring of our dad's family. When I see that ring or wear that ring, I actually think about more of who I actually am. And from who I am, then produces who I want to be. You know, some of us have trinkets like this, like even this, this ring on my finger, this wedding band is actually my grandfather's wedding band. When he passed away, my grandmother sent it to me. I remember putting it on for the first time. It was way too big. I thought to myself, I'm not quite the man he is. You see, but reminding myself of who I am and knowing actually who I am and what I'm actually really part of then changes something in me. Do you see how the foundation, the beginning point matters? You see, the call of the Bible on your life is not to return to God by doing all the right things. It's to return to God so that you abide and spend time with him. Abiding is actually language from the New Testament in which Jesus tells us to abide with him. And here's the point. What you're rooted into will produce fruit in you. Does that make sense? What you're rooted into will produce fruit in you. And so what you're binding yourself to or spending time in or giving yourself to or putting your hope in will change the outcome of things in your life. And what we see in the Israelite picture of all the things they're doing, all the stuff that's coming their way, what we see for God's judgment on their life is actually a result of their choice from what they're rooting into because they're not rooting into an abiding relationship with God. Has God been trying to get your attention? Has he? And if he has, then what has been your response? Has it been to try and read the Bible more because that's what you think he wants from you? Is it maybe God, oh, I don't want this in my life, so now I'm gonna start coming to church because I think then you'll bless me. Is it I've been single for so long and it hurts so bad, I just want something different. And so I start trying to do all the religious things so that you'll give me what I want. I want more money, God, so I'll start like doing what I think you want from me. God just wants you to return to him. He wants you to return to him. 